Jose making his way into the ring, a very likable 24-year-old, as you saw there, 5'7", 116 and a half pounds, California native, 23 wins, those two losses for the title in Japan. And when you look at his last five fights, you will notice that he sandwiched in two knockout wins in between the two nightmares overseas. I got it. I got it right here. Okay. All right, gentlemen, we're going 10 rounds. We want a good professional fight. Touch him up. Very good. The ring experience Ten is rounds. sponsored by Just For Men Hair Color. Torres has had eight more fights, 75 more total rounds. Navarro has put forth 24 championship rounds, and Torres has never fought for the title. I talked about Torres getting wide and wild on his rap sheet, so to speak. He has two disqualification losses, one for punching while the man was on the knee, and the other for an intentional headbutt. So Torres does indeed get a little wild in spots. There's a wide left hand, just as you detailed, Teddy, right out of the gate. And Navarro, very good technically. He is a solid guy technically. Doesn't do one thing great, but he does everything well. Doesn't do anything poorly. Two southpaws. Navarro in the burgundy, Torres in the red. Coming forward behind that right hand jab. You can see on the trunks that Jose has a saying, it says uncrowned champion. Everybody who has seen the tape or watched the fight live feels he was robbed the first time he fought for a world title. Again, you can see Navarro right away. He's compact, he's technically, fundamentally very solid. Always in position, we talked about Berto in the last round, a young prospect who also had a terrific amateur background like Navarro does. Always set to punch. Navarro's always in position with his legs. Looks to slip punches, create openings. He's defensively responsible. If he has a flaw, it's once in a while, Joe. After he makes a defensive move, he has set of himself still in punching range. Instead of changing his range, his distance, he has set himself like that, right in front of his man. Every once in a while, Navarro gets a little too picture perfect. I mean, he looks good fundamentally. Sometimes he's too good. He's standing right in front of his man a little too straight up a little too picture perfect give himself or make himself a little bit of a target like that Torres came in with two left hands you know Torres has been finding the mark with these wide shots and the reason he's finding the mark is for what we touched on Navarro will center himself right in front of his man standing straight up he needs to change that distance all the way out or get all the way in, not there at the end of those punches again. Teddy, he's easily landed about seven good left hands in this first round alone. And all of them looping. It should be no surprise to Navarro if we knew that he was coming in throwing looping punches. Navarro and his people obviously needed to do their scouting and understand the same. He hasn't been active only one fight in the last two and a half years, but he did say, Bernie Torres said, that he had outstanding training and it's showing off here in round number one no ring rust to really shake off against the former Olympian and two-time world title challenger Jose Navarro nine rounds to work with but Joe he's a roundhouse puncher if you stay in front of him you study too long he's gonna get lucky with the yeah, you better shot. off like Don't this <coughs> okay. so, you're better off like this right hand and keep that right hand high because you, know that? you gotta be careful with that side right okay breathe come on time to wake up come on time to wake up when you're inside short it up and then get out of there short up and out of there force yourself to, to circle right here. with that jab <coughs> yeah. Joe, keep busy. Go get up. Go study. Get up the jab, okay, Vernie? Come on, baby. Stay sharp. 32-year-old Vernie Torres, the Southpaw 27-win veteran. 
lives in L.A., trained in Arizona, and put in two weeks of sparring in New York and the Poconos and had a nice first round against Jose Navarro here in this scheduled 10-round main event. You must understand your opponent, his strengths and his weaknesses, his style, his tendencies. And once you understand that, you understand the only kind of punches Torres throws are looping ones, like that. And the only way he can land is with a little cooperation, like that. Standing straight in front of Torres. Navarro, every once in a while, will pull back from too close, and he'll pull back into those looping punches, or he'll stand up straight at the end of those looping punches. Joe, it's very simple. For Navarro, he has to understand where those punches land. They don't land if you're in real close inside them. But they land if you stand at the end of them. Simply put, Navarro has to be all the way out of range of those punches, or as he is now, all the way inside those wide punches. Two thousand US Olympian was Jose Navarro. He won two bouts, then he lost his third bout. And there's that range you talked about as Torres tries to back him up just off the mark with another one of those looping left hands. And here comes Navarro back to the inside where he digs a right hand to the body. You see Navarro has a very calm disposition. Doesn't get rattled easily. Maybe sometimes too calm. Maybe some people would like to see him a little more excited. Fight with a little bit more fire. But his punches are always controlled. He doesn't waste anything. He's always in position. Torres will waste punches. Again, the one flaw with Navarro is once in a while he'll stand up straight in front of his man when he's not all the way out of range, when he's in that no man's land. Punch track numbers there. You see Torres not active here with the jabs in this second round. Teddy, you bring up a good point. It's a point that Navarro really was able to do a self-scouting report and notice he told us when we met with him that he has to stop being a nice guy in the ring. He thinks that his style is too much of a boxer. He used to talk about his control and comfort of standing right in front, that he needs to be more of an exciting fighter, a more active fighter, and give the fans what they want to see and give his opponent what he doesn't want to see. If you were a chef and Navarro was a meal, you look at him and you say, Boy, that looks like a perfect meal, but it just needs a little spice. And that spice, little fire from the barrel. A little more of it as we come to the end of round two, scheduled for 10. Yeah, give me that. I, I, I'll do something with it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. And his temperament, too. He doesn't waste anything. I'll show that. Say that again. 100. <clears throat> yeah. That's in the second round. Yeah. Some action by Navarro in the last round. You can see that temperament, very calm. And you see, fundamentally, he doesn't waste anything. He's always in position, plays a good body shot there, takes a step back, gives himself room to take advantage of Torres coming in. Fundamentally, very sound. Round three, tries to charge in with the left hand there, sends it to the body. You see the head shots in round two. Navarro threw 117 punches to Torres' head. In that second round, he landed 28% of them. Torres is a free swinger. He doesn't think about throwing. He just lets them go when it pleases him. Torres thinks about, Navarro thinks about throwing. He makes sure he's in position. He makes sure it's okay to throw. It's responsible to throw. 
Catches him with a left hand that time. Now has him on the inside against the ropes. Took his time before throwing that right hand and gives a chance for Torres to work. Good position for Naval, but he gives that up and every once in a while as we talked about in the fight plans. Watch when Naval gets inside in a good pocket on either side, his right or his left, where he's defensively safe and he's in position for offense. He'll pull himself back out and center himself where he can be vulnerable to those looping shots that Torres needs a little room to get off. Comes in behind the left hand that time. Now see, that's good position there for Naval. But what he does is sometimes he'll pull himself out of that position and he'll center himself. See that position? Good position by Navarro right there. Now he's keeping his head on either side. And that is smart. The problem for Navarro is when he allows his head not to be on either side. When he centers himself at the end of those looping shots. You will not see Navarro catch much leather in close. Torres needs room to throw leather. Sean Navarro throwing over 300. There's the room. There it is. See, he centers himself. Just watch that. It's very interesting. Navarro gets into great position, and he takes it away, and he did it again by centering himself and allowing Torres to be effective. Again, good position there, Joe, for Navarro. But watch. He'll give it up. He'll pull himself back out after a good body shot. Watch to see if he centers himself. If he stays in that pocket, he's fine. It's when he pulls out and doesn't change range. So Hain good work now. Right uppercut, scoring well now with Torres up against the ropes, trying to break that guard. He did so with a right hand. There's a wide shot that's off the mark. But what you see serving Navarro now is that he does not waste anything. He places his punches very well. Strong finish to this third round for Jose Navarro. Had Torres up against the ropes, took advantage, right. placed Three, his shots five. well. Okay, we got more rounds to work with, so stay composed, all right? Don't go over there. Watch for the uppercut, Teddy. Again, he sees that Torres was leaning forward, just the punch that the doctor ordered. Man leans forward, you want to go to that uppercut and straighten him up. Here's another look at it. Torres starts to lean forward. Navarro positions himself for the uppercut, not once, but twice. Look at Jab, move around, faint, make a miss. When he misses, he gets tired. That's where you get him too. A beautiful body work, but and Joe, three seconds to the body, then pull out and box it. Three seconds, pull out and box it. Don't stay in there all day. Okay? Alright, then go with us. Alright, good. But Joe, sit up that right up good again with the elbow. Rompa that. So Frank Rivera says three seconds to the body and then pull out and box him. The problem you say, Teddy, is yeah, the three seconds to the body is good. It's be careful when you pull out centered because those wide looping shots are going to meet their mark at that moment. Don't pull out tall and don't pull out in the center right in front of your man. Pull out low and get out hey, far guys, enough you where you're not in punching range. Here, right? You're not at the end of Time the punch in. of Torres. Jose Navarro has had a busy month back on May 6th. His wife gave birth to his first son, Jose Jr. He's been working very hard training. So hard, actually, that the day his son was born gave him great motivation. He went in and put some gym work on that day alone. There's two ways that Navarro is going about trying to take Torres apart now. To press, to get inside, to get into that good pocket on either side, the left or the right, and work. The others, as we talked in the fight plan, at the right range every once in a while, watch Navarro as he'll try to draw Torres in. He'll step out every once in a while, try to get Torres to get wide with the shot and create an opening for a counter. Back to the uppercut again, that time off the mark. Again, watch Navarro, he's in good position right now. It's when he centers himself after that position, as he just did a moment ago, when he eats some long punches. Bring him up, bring him up. Right hand to the body, tried to deliver the straight left, had a momentary opening. Torres cannot land unless Navarro gives him the landscape. 
Mabara has to help Torres. He has to pull out in that no man's land and straighten up. If he's inside tight like that, Torres just does not have the room to throw the kind of punches he likes stop, to throw. Stop, stop, stop. We gotta get him up. Veteran New England referee Dick Flaherty with the warning. Both guys inside close with their heads. Torres has been involved in head class fights and so is Navarro. Navarro was cut over his right eye in his last fight. You know that his corner has to be a little concerned with that head banging around a little bit inside with Torres. Real unfortunate circumstances getting that cut opened up early on in his last title shot in Japan. He fought through it, lost the decision and trying to bounce back here tonight. That looked like it was towards the back of the head. Protect yourself at all times though. Instead Torres complaining and Navarro delivering. There's the uppercut now. Now if this was Emmanuel Augustus, he would be letting both hands go even if the opening's not there and trying to create it. Not Navarro. He's a different intellect. You can see he's waiting for perfect spots. He's trying to create openings. He's trying to pinpoint position for punches. Navarro does not like to waste anything. He's very thoughtful about what he throws and why he throws it. Good showing from Jose Navarro as we come to the end of this fourth round on Wednesday night fights. Come on, let's go. I know, stay hey, sharp. Stay sharp. Spit bucket at? Bring the spit bucket up. Bring it up. Stay sharp, okay, Bernie, Bernie. Stop staying on the ropes, okay? You stay Very end here. See, see I think he's going to reach in. There it is. Yeah. All right. Tomorrow night, it is the NBA Conference Semifinals. Coverage begins at 9 Eastern with the Kia NBA Shootaround. Then it is the Phoenix Suns and the LA Clippers, and the Suns are looking to close the door. They have a 3-2 series lead. The NBA Conference Semis on ESPN, also available in high def on ESPN HD. At the end of the last round, we saw what we were talking about in the fight plan for both Navarro and Torres. Navarro steps back a little bit and Torres lets one of those wide, wild punches go and he loses his balance and Navarro just misses catching him with a clean shot. Body shot comes in and then a sweeping left hand as he chases Torres across the ring. Again, the interesting thing to look for here is Navarro, when he gets on the side, he can work that uppercut or that body shot from the right side or from the left side. His only danger is when he centers himself with the long punching Torres. Right here, he's safe, free to get off. Look at the punches thrown by Ram. Look at the work rate by Jose Navarro for 147 punches in that fourth round. Right now, Torres, in the posture that he's in, he's just begging to be hurt to the body. Covering up, laying on the ropes, offering no offense, just inviting Navarro to come in and go to work. That right hand traveled south. Another warning from Dick Flaherty. Two good body muffs. punches there, Teddy. Yes, Joe, when you put the earmuffs on, like Hotoris is doing, and you're not throwing back, you're just looking to block shots, you're telling your opponent, come on in and have a go at me. Navarro's having a go. Torres hasn't had a go of it since last June. Inactivity. He's gotten the best of his career. He sat out 2004 because of a contractual agreement he didn't like. He's only had one fight in the last two and a half years. Again, Navarro in good position. Slips to the right, he's in position for that right hand for the southpaw to the body. And he's defensively responsible, he's safe. It's when he centers himself, when he pulls out right in front of his man without changing distance, that's when Torres can have a shot. Not now. 
ripping that right hand, the body twice, and then shot off the uppercut, and now trying to place that left hand to the body. You know what will work right now? One of those Mickey Ward hooks. Not the left hook, but the southpaw hook. The right hand for Navarro. Go upstairs, get that elbow to come up, and then go downstairs real fast. Watch the elbows of Torres. You want to get a shot in clean. Watch how the elbows of Torres go up. When something goes, there's the body shot when the elbows were up. Just watch those elbows of Torres. You want to be able to move those elbows out of the way to get to that body if you're Navarro. Go upstairs, get the elbow to come up, and then go downstairs quick. Coincidence, you make that Mickey Ward reference. This was the very ring in where he landed that body shot against Arturo Gatti. Well, the fighting Navarro is a little something as the bell rings at the end of five. Of course, Carlos Navarro was the first to have great success. We saw Carlos Navarro last year against Bobby Pacquiao in one of the strangest circumstances we have ever seen in the ring. When Carlos flat out quit and then counted himself out along with the referee. That was a moment that really upset his very proud brother, Jose. My father brought us up to always do our best and of course if we didn't feel good, you know, stop the fight, but not in that fashion. I mean, that was very amateurish, but I'm hoping that tonight I can be able to give a great performance and erase a little bit of what happened that night. Very honest assessment there, as you could see how bothered Jose was by his brother's actions last year on Friday Night Fights. Round number six, scheduled for 10. Jose Navarro, the former Olympian and two-time world title challenger in the Burgundy trucks. You saw the chippiness and the shot after the bell thrown by Bernie Torres after the fifth round. Well, referee Dick Flaherty went around to the judges and deducted a point against Bernie Torres after the fifth round, so a point deduction against Torres. Teddy Atlas' scorecard, so a 10-9 round becomes a 10-8 round, and now a big hole for Torres. He looks sharp in that first round with the looping wide shot, specifically the left hands that landed, but Navarro has found his range. He's been doing better work on the inside, and for most of the past couple rounds, he's had Torres against the ropes. And again, only... The only danger zones or spots for Navarro is after he's in that great position inside, which he's in right now, when he pulls himself out like that and he stands straight up. You can see blood now coming from the nose of Bernie Torres. Hey, get off the ropes. You know, you just saw that sound clip of Navarro being so brutally honest about the behavior of his brother. That is one of the things that assures me that Navarro is going to win, at some point, a world title. You need honesty in a fighter, honesty about yourself, honesty about what you're doing and what you're not doing. That kind of honesty will serve you in your career in that ring. And I believe it's going to serve Navarro, who at the age of 24, after already fighting for a world title in a foreign country, two times, losing a split decision in one, I think it's only a matter of time with that amateur background and that kind of character when Navarro is finally going to get a belt put around his waist. And I'll say this, Teddy. You know, the lower weight class is many times dogged by the TV networks and the promoters. But we are right now in air in the game with, with uh, Perez and Arce and Valoria where you can make some money and you can have some showcase fights among the lower weight classes. Yeah, you can. You can match guys up where you can have goal rounds and down the road. You can have maybe some classic matchups two or three times with some of those guys. Again, you can see Navarro's temperament at work here. Not only his technique and his physical action, but he doesn't want to waste anything. It serves him in spots to be really accurate, but sometimes it allows the opponent maybe to rest.
Did when they put up that score, did we yes. put the right score? Yes, it was yeah, ten eight. No, I mean forty five instead of forty six because I had forty six. <laughs> Whatever she wants, he said. Yeah. Queen said she's going to pick up the pies. Get all those pizzas. <laughs> Seventh round scheduled for 10. Jose Navarro having a good go of it tonight. He's in the Burgundy Trucks, the former U.S. Olympian in control against the Filipino native Bernie Torres. Of course, Navarro was robbed of a world title in Japan a couple years ago. He said, you know, the anger only got worse. The plane lands back home and you realize you don't have a belt. You have a loss on your record that shouldn't be there. And you put in all that hurt, hard work. But I give him a lot of credit, Teddy. We're getting right back into position to try to run up that ladder again. It takes dedication and focus. Not surprising coming from a kid that's a no-nonsense kid like Navarro. As we talked about his honesty, talking about the behavior of his brother in that fight with Pacquiao. Also, Navarro tells you, I won that first title fight in Japan. I thought I was robbed, but I lost the second one. That happened a few months ago, and now coming in and chasing down Torres with left hands and getting him back against the ropes, where he's been able to get off the past few rounds, goes to the body with the right hand, tries to shoot the uppercut. You know, when Navarro lost that last fight in Japan for the WBC title, in a 12-round unanimous decision, he said he didn't do enough. And you could see that that's one of the possible shortcomings or maybe floors of Navarro. Sometimes he could be out hustled because when he could do a little extra, he doesn't. His temperament is not to do extra, not to waste anything. You can see some blood now in the seventh round around the right eye of Navarro. Blood's been streaming out of the nose of Torres for a round and a half. See a little blood now in the corner of the right eye of Navarro. We talked about it earlier, Navarro was cut over that eye, and it looks like the same spot in his last fight, Joe. We talked about it a couple rounds ago, and we also talked about both of these fighters being prone to bang around with their heads inside. Both of these guys have been involved with head clashes in the past. And referee Dick Flaherty confirming that that is the case here, so in case we have to get things stopped because of the cut we would go to the scorecards and Navarro seemingly well ahead on the scorecards against Torres it is good position again for Navarro when he can work off of either side he takes care of defense and offense at the same time he just has to be careful that he does not stop in that in-between zone, that no-man's zone, with the wide punching Torres. Torres with that wild style, those looping punches. Still, of course, has a chance, but we're seeing fewer and fewer moments where he's willing to put it forth. Well, he's starting to look like a balloon that's slowly letting the air out. End of seven. Okay, let's go. The cut was caused by a headbutt. <coughs> stop, stay, stay, sharp, stay sharp, bro. Stay sharp. Stay sharp. Win, Barry, keep the water going, bro. Barry, keep the water. Water. Stay sharp. Right, give me one. Good, Bernie. Mm -hmm. right, breathe. Okay, Joe, on the outside, you got to keep that right hand up tight. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know. If you're inside, do not get your head clashing with his head. All right, Joe? Don't let it clash. All right. But do not fight scared either. All right, we're okay. Okay? 
Bring round eight. Got three rounds. Okay, box protected. Be smart. When you're inside, rip the body and then get out, Joe. Three seconds and get Jose out. Jose Navarro dealing with that cut over the right eye. It happened in his world title shot back in February. It happened here from a clash of heads in round number seven against Bernie Torres. His corners told him, hey, we're fine. Don't fight scared because of the cut. He has been fine now for seven rounds after Torres took the first round on our scorecards. Navarro's been in complete control. Again, you can see where the temperament of Navarro can serve him and haunt him just a little bit. Doesn't waste anything. Make sure he's in good position. You can see right now, he's like a surgeon. He's looking to really cut apart Torres. He doesn't want anything to go astray, anything to be out of position. But sometimes in a close fight, not throwing those extra punches, some throwaway punches might hurt him a little on the scorecard. Torres has won two straight, but he's been inactive. Last fight was in June 2005. Hasn't been stopped since 2001, but he's absorbing a lot tonight against Navarro. Look at the total punches. Here comes the 1,000 mark in total punches thrown from Jose Navarro. Again, the only time that Torres has a chance of finding the target is when Navarro, from that good position inside, will suddenly straighten out and center himself. Like he did right there. Left hand. You know, the difference now is two things. One, Navarro not centering himself as much as he did early in the fight. The other, Torres starting to lose a little of his appetite from those body shots to let his hands go. Yeah, even if Navarro was in that position that you say is the danger zone, not a lot of confidence that Torres would be able to deliver it at this point. No, less and less coming from Torres, as we said before, like a balloon that's losing its air little by little. Tries to come with the right hook that time. He squared himself up for a moment. Now back to his southpaw stance and drives a left hand to the body. Again, a tough game, Torres. No better place to go to test that toughness than downstairs to the body. And Navarro is a good body punch. Again, that Mickey Ward punch would serve him well. A quick tap upstairs and then quickly downstairs. There's a low punch. The referee was out of position. He was just coming around the backside when that right hand came in. What a shot. It was, it was timed like, oh, yeah, it was, but you know, it was, watch Dick Flaherty. Dick Flaherty was just making his circle move. Yeah, he was make just the making his circle move. It was directly behind him when it came in. I'd like to get the low blow and, if we can, the referee. You don't see the ref there, but he was right behind him. Yeah, well that wasn't, it, it was glancing, it wasn't, yeah. let me see that again. That wasn't as Uppercut bad as it looked. You know what, it almost, it, it wasn't. On the belt? It was glancing, yeah, uh, it was low. It right was on low. that row. Yeah, uh, yeah, give it to me. I wish I could see the referee because it was a perfect example yeah. of how the referee just wasn't there. He just, at that very moment, he was just coming around <coughs> to the other side at that moment. It was right dead center like the clock lined up. The end of the last hey, round, we were talking about go. the body work of Navarro. He gets away maybe with one a little low here. Not very significant, but you could see it started low and it rolled up a little bit. Torres didn't complain. No penalty taken by the ref. 32-year-old Bernie Torres in the red trunks with white trim. He has won two straight, but now an uphill battle against the well-skilled Jose Navarro, well behind on Teddy Atlas's scorecard. And the punches in round eight, a 54-25 connected advantage for Jose. Stay up his head, Jose, come on. 
Frank Rivera, Jorge Pedroza, Larry Odona, all doing a terrific job with Jose also, Larry Odona doing a good job on the cuts. With Navarro, if there was anything I would add, and there's not much, and it's a lot easier from this seat, obviously. And they're the ones who are doing a good job with Navarro so far in his career. But I would only concentrate on two things, possibly, Joe. And one is for Navarro not to have that situation where he stands up straight right there in that punching pocket, in that punching zone where he's a little bit of a target. The other is sometimes in these positions, instead of being so methodical with his punches, then it's great. You know, he doesn't waste anything. He's pinpoint with his punches. But in spots, when he's in position, I would let my hands go a little bit more. If the opening's not there, let the hands go and create the opening. So interesting that we would have Emmanuel Augustus and Jose Navarro on the same card because everything one is, the other isn't. But they're both good at what they do. But Jose is so in control and technically sound, and you can see the headshots now, according to Punch Trek. Over 1,000 thrown for Jose Navarro, 308 and counting landed. They're so opposite, Augustus and Navarro, as far as temperaments and fighting style. The only thing they have in common is they're effective with their style. They are indeed. And as we said earlier, the other thing they have in common is Augustus is used to getting robbed, and Navarro got robbed at an inopportune time when he fought for the world title the first time. He tries to fire off the left uppercut. You can see the blood coming out of the nose, heavier now, from Torres, and telling Navarro to come on, come on. I'm looking for a good body shot to suddenly crash home here on the ribs of Torres, and I think Navarro would be well served to concentrate on the body. Torres is showing he can take it to the head. Let's see the body, and again, I think he would be served, Navarro, by going upstairs quick. Get those gloves up, and then go downstairs. Watch the elbows of Torres. Anything comes to the head, look, the elbows go up. That's a good spot for Navarro to go down. Torres looks battered here at the end of round nine. Bernie, this is the last round. We gotta do this. Okay, Bernie? We gotta do this. This is the last round, okay? We're not leaving it in the judge's hands. Okay? Okay, Bernie? Bernie, let's go for broke, okay, Bernie? Let's go for broke, okay? Huh? Let's go for broke. Yeah, we gotta do this, okay, Bernie? No, nah, because last he's blocking round, it with his, you know, the body. The barrel's just blocking it. Let me see. On, nah, on. nah, he wasn't clean enough. Uh, breathe, breathe. So the right hand's beautiful, it's working. Use the straight left and the left upper. Okay? <clears throat> All right, you got this by one, right? So don't take no unnecessary chances. But, you know, close the show too, you know? Just don't be stupid. All right? Okay, beautiful, beautiful. You cannot leave this. Let's go. Okay? Woo! Okay, Bernie? Let your hands go. Bernie, let your hands go, okay? Let your hands go, okay, Bernie? Okay. Tenth and final round. Bernie That's Torres, 32 years old, trying to come back. That's He's been mouth. inactive in recent okay. years. Put in hard work in training. Jose Navarro may have worked a little harder, and at 24 years old, more in the prime of his career, he has been outstanding tonight. He's in the Burgundy, the Southpaw versus Southpaw matchup. 2000 U.S. Olympian is Navarro and a two-time world title challenger. Teddy Atlas' scorecard shows how complete of a night it's been for Navarro. Torres landed the wide shots that impressed early, but then Navarro more consistent and steadier, 89-81. And the average punches thrown through nine rounds, a staggering number of 135 punches per round thrown by Navarro. He's landed 44 of them. Not too late for a sensational body punch. Again, even in the last round, if Navarro can touch upstairs, get that elbow to come up for Torres, and then quickly, with a snapping action, get downstairs before the elbow drops. Watch those elbows of Torres. Anytime something comes up top, he not only blocks with his gloves, but he raises his elbows. And you can see it right there. Makes for a very inviting target to the body. Throws out a left hand of his own. Now comes forward does Torres.
Tried to put the left hand to the body. Glanced off to the side, off the right elbow. Again, the setup for that body shot, and it would have to be off a setup. You can't just throw it cold because Torres will see and he will drop that elbow. You have to touch something up top and then quickly and swiftly snap your shoulder down to catch him in that hole. Tried to open it up with the uppercut. Instead, lands a straight left hand. We're talking about the opportunities for Navarro to the body. There's some opportunities for Torres as Navarro stands in that no man's land again. Hasn't done that in a while, but for a few moments he's been there here in this 10th and final round. No man's land because he's not all the way out and he's not all the way in. He's in a place where no man should stand within that squared circle. A place you can get hit, especially with long looping shots that Torres likes to chuck. Navarro trying to finish strong, and he does, and that was important to him. He told us that he feels the pressure to show the skill set and to try to impress everyone. He was impressive tonight. We will come back, go over the punch stat numbers, and get the judges' scores. Stay with us. Yep. Come back and talk half. <coughs> Yep. 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 Just Hatton, no ring rankings. Okay. Definitely not Pereira and Aiken. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we have the bout time animation, or is it pointless? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Huh? Yes, of course. Big numbers, huh? Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't sing it. I'd love to be able to right now. Um. Oh, someone's talking to me. Yay! Hey, Rick. Yeah, I'm all, I'm good. All right. Are we done? What time is your flight tomorrow? Oh, yeah, tomorrow? that's right. Okay. That's right. All right. Yep. And we'll come back and talk Ricky Hatton. Okay. Um, I would do anything right now to have an afternoon flight. Anything. I got a 7.30 flight. I know. It's going to tear me up. I mean, it's not even since May. Is there a direct in the afternoon? Yes. <coughs> ESPN2 Wednesday Night Fights presented by the new Just For Men hair color knocks out the gray better than ever. And in part by Pioneer. See how Pioneer Navigation Systems can improve your commute at drivehappier.com. The magnificent Mohegan Sun. It was a magnificent night for the two-time world title challenger, Jose Navarro. Extraordinary punch track numbers. The total punches, 439 out of 1,343 thrown. Staggering output by Navarro. Teddy Atlas's scorecard, it was easy to read tonight. 
Navarro across the board, 99 to 90. Now for the ring announcer. Let's take a quick look before we hear from the judges about what impressed you tonight with Navarro. Well, I liked his pinpoint punching. Again, he kept those hands moving at a pretty damn good rate. And more importantly, he was never out of position. Everything was pretty accurate. Everything had a purpose. And other than those couple spots where he centered himself, he was in good position all night long. Joe Antonacci is the ring announcer who donates his entire fee every week to the Gerald McClellan Fund, and we sent it to him for the decision. Boxing fans, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Steve Epstein scores the bout 99-89. Judge George Smith sees it 99-90. And Judge Tommy Kazmarek has it 98-91. All for your winner by unanimous decision, Jose Navarro! Trying to work his way back into title contention and go for the belt a third time. Jose Navarro, the 24th win of his career. More Wednesday night fights when we return. We will get Teddy's take on Ricky Hatton, Louis Collazo.